Hey everybody, how's it going? I hope you had a great week. I'm gonna jump right into this one as it's probably gonna be a little bit longer of a video. Reason for that being, I recently had a one-on-one -on -one video mentorship with Jared Pollan or Frono's Photos on YouTube. The reason I wanted to have this one-on-one -on -one mentorship was because I needed a professional look at my photography to see where I am and where I need to go and how I need to better myself. Uh, even though I've only been doing this for nine months, I still always want to progress as much as I possibly can. I figured what better than have a professional photographer look at my work, mentor me, let me know what I need done, and just give me advice. <laughs> I'm gonna hop into the video and let you take a look. I'll see you on the other side. Have fun. Let me get this started. All right. Hello. Hello. <laughs> what uh what are you up to today? Anything fun? Um nope. I just got up about a half an hour ago. <laughs> Late, I guess. Yeah, I, I work second shift, so Got I'm, it. Uh, I'm off at like 10.30 at night, so. All right, makes sense. I read through what you were writing. You've only been shooting for eight, nine months? Correct, yeah. All right, which is a short amount of time, so I always take that into consideration. So let me let me share my screen. We'll, we'll jump right in, because any questions you have, just ask them at any time. Okay. You know, I, I, I did read what you wrote and what you're looking for, so, I mean, it's not you know, I, I saw it. The stuff with this power shot is going to be hard to critique, but yeah. You know. So this, this image, um, I think there's only actually this one image with the power shot. Uh, that was actually the, the first camera that I started with. Yeah. Um, and then images, uh, two and three, I believe were just shot with my iPhone. I was just trying to kind of, um, kind of get an eye for compensation. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I believe four through, oh, quite a ways, I think in, into the 20s or 30s um, was with the Sony a7 III. And then everything beyond a certain picture was uh, the a7 IV. All right. We'll get there. I mean, what, oh, what yeah. I like that you did with the iPhone is you, you went out and looked for a certain image. You got the nice reflection here. Um, the only thing I do is I, I don't crop in this aspect ratio. I mean, mm -hmm. we'll see what your other ones look like in, in terms of cropping, but uh, I also tightened it up in terms of contrast. This is this was your edit, and then that was my quick little edit, just adding just a couple little tweaks. Okay. Um, I It's hard to give you advice being certain colorblind, right? That's a little more difficult because yeah. I don't know. You know, it's hard <laughs> to, to say if you have too much red in a skin tone, I don't know how to see it if, you know, yeah. how you see it. Yeah, and 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 mostly mine is, uh, so like blues and purples will blend depending on how light or dark they are. Yellows yeah. and greens, um, and then red and orange. Got so it. I can see a vast amount of colors. I just can't see all of them depending on how light or how dark they are. Got it. Yeah, so something like this, good angle, good light coming in from the side uh good composition i really like the way that you frame this shot settings are fine except for i mean it's really dark it's at sixteen thousand. generally we're not going to push that far but it yeah. works here you didn't you didn't do anything wrong your settings are good right generally we don't want to push that high to sixteen thousand. even in this case you could drop to one five hundredth of a sec sorry one fiftieth of a second at one eight at eight thousand but even with that being said, it still looks perfectly fine. And I would never have said, uh, known that it was taken at 16,000 unless I looked at it. Yeah. And I, I think I, I probably did, <clears throat> excuse me, a little bit of, um, uh, not smoothing. Uh, what is that? The uh, noise, noise reduction. reduction. Yeah. I think I did a little bit of noise reduction. There's, there's probably quite a bit of processing done to this photo. Um, just because it, this is really early on when I had my a seven three, and I think I had just gotten that 85 millimeter mm -hmm. 1.8. So 
Yeah, that's fine. My my whole thing with um, I would not go too far with noise reduction. You know, buy I wouldn't buy softwares for it. I wouldn't do it. It just ends up looking fake. Uh, this looks fine. Yeah. Um, but I wouldn't go too far. Anytime you you go too far, uh, you can tell. Now, in terms of your processing, you say that you're throwing presets on everything. Uh, yeah, pretty much. Um, there's very few that I don't um toss you know some presets on there um mostly it's just so that i can kind of get the colors the way that i like them or how i think they look good yeah and then i'll pretty much just put the preset on there and then i'll just start at the top from exposure go all the way down look at where the sliders are at mess with all the sliders adjust them how i like them mm -hmm. you know do i want more contrast less you know, highlights, shadows, so on yeah. and so forth. I mean, I, I would try, I mean, it's, it's okay to use the presets. There's nothing wrong with that. I would still try from scratch to do your own thing to start. I mean, not to start, but just to see what it's like to see what you can do and then look at someone else's right. And the recommendation would be that if you have two similar images or you have a photo shoot, don't do 73 different presets across similar images. If it's guy, if, if it's a dog running in the park, then every image should kind of look either black and white or color but not have 73 different preset choices yeah yeah that's understandable yeah this is really good composition i'm a big fan of putting the eyes above this third th i call this the third line on a vertical uh because it's just much better than putting eyes in the middle so really good composition right there uh you got to be very careful at 1.8 because in this case, we've got, well, it's hard to say. It's probably focused on the glasses more. Yeah. But I was that's, say, uh, that probably that lower part of the glasses right about here. Right. But what, it, it's, it's all right. Nobody, nobody's going to notice that. I think it's too warm. You know, that's where the yellow, the yellow is. I know that's how those lights are. But I'm just going to cut through that and just, and just go something along those lines. Okay. It also tightens up. Yeah, it did. there's like a yellow wash over the image, and I just basically yeah. got rid of all that. And, and I think you're right. I think it is mostly the uh, the light because it's just those in indoor light bulbs. Yep. And it has kind of a yellow. What do they call that? Cover to it. Yeah. Yeah. The the shade. Yeah. But so far so good. Really, the, the, it's good composition right off the bat, which is always good. And your settings are are good. So that's a. It's nice to see that right off the bat after. A couple months of shooting. Um, this is a tougher shot at 85 millimeters, but it's good because it conveys enough of the story. There's enough people in the shot to show that there's a party going on or there's a gathering that mm -hmm. they're checking in on the soup or whatever's going on here, and your processing looks good. So that stuff that works. Um, if you do have wider, which you do because you said you have the Tamrons and Sigmas and all of that, um, yeah. work your way through. The story you may have done it but i like to see i like to see wides that establish a scene especially if there's a lot of people across the frame uh, mm -hmm. or say it's a a bedroom and you're doing a photo shoot for uh, a mother right and she's sitting there and or the baby's in the crib and she's sitting there or holding the baby on a rocking chair and you can see all the different pictures on the wall and you can see the size of the room and you can get a feel for all the other things that are in the image and not just a super tight shot. So it's trying yeah. to tell a story with wide shots where you can, the reason I like doing that is because those pictures on the wall will mean something at some point, right? It's like, right. oh, there's all of this. Oh, there's our grandfather and the grandmother. This is who they were named after. So thinking about all the different toys that are on the shelves will remind somebody in 20 years that I remember that type of thing. But yeah. I always say, go through the wides and mediums, the tights and the details. If you have the time, you run through all of those. So you give yourself a good cross section to choose from. Yeah. Yeah. I think at this point, so this is Thanksgiving. Um, and let's see, just saying, looking through the uh, images down below. Um, I think at this point I had only had the 85 millimeter and the kit lens that came okay. with a seven three. So it was at the 20, 24 to 70. I'm not sure which one came with that one. Yeah. So, but yeah, like I, I had tried using the, the kit lens where I was having issues is the F stop for the kit lens. Yep. And it was actually super dark um, in the house. 
So I was yeah. like trying to get an adjustment, but I was like, okay, well, I get more light with the, the yeah. 85. So I just tried my hand at that. <laughs> that's, that's good. There's nothing wrong with it at all. Um, really good job with, with composition here. So using out of focus things to draw you in the natural framing. This is really good. Really, again, for eight, nine months, this is spot on. Um, Thank you. This is really nice composition. There's, you know, tweaks we could do. I, I like more contrast. You know, it started off pretty flat. All I did here is I went boom, you know? Yeah. And I don't mind the extra glow of the skin tone. I don't mind that because that's what the stout, stout, stoop, stoop. Yeah. Uh, stoop, stoop. <laughs> stoop? Um, I don't mind the, the reflection off of there. So that's good. I think a black and white could probably work as well, but I like the little light uh, hits of color. So that, that's, that's good as well. Stoop. They got bowling alley tables. Um, yeah, I think they're, I, um, what do they call that? Shuffleboard. Oh, shuffle, shuffle alley. Yeah. It might actually be a bowling alley though. I'm not it sure. May be, it may be. No, nah, the diamonds are too far apart. Yeah. Possibly. Um, yeah. I mean, th this works. Obviously, when you shoot wider at 23 millimeters, it's going to elongate certain things. So it doesn't give you straight lines until you hit about you know, 40, 50 millimeters is when everything starts to stay a little straighter. Um, but but it's it's good composition. The best thing to do when you're shooting food or shots at a restaurant, if you're trying to get the, the, the food or the drinks, the window light is super important. So setting up by a table where you use the window light the natural light's going to be really nice. And I think you've got some window light in here as well. Yeah, I think the window was off to my right, uh, probably about 10 feet or so. Yeah, I mean, it, it works. It totally works. Uh, if you want to get more in focus, then we would not be at 2.8. If that's right, you know, if you want to just focus on the glass, which you did, it looks it looks good. Yeah, I yeah, actually, I think I took this for a thumbnail for a YouTube video that I was that I was got making. It. That works out. Is this up in the ceiling? Yeah. So this is a crazy big chandelier that was up above me. And I just happened to be, I think I was yawning or stretching or something. And I looked up and I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. So I just kind of tossed my camera upwards and took the shot. Yeah. I always say, don't forget to look up, you know, finding those different angles because it works out, especially yeah. in the forests and stuff. Okay. I'm going to look through this real quick because we got a couple of these. One, this Peter McKinnon preset doesn't work. <laughs> this one I was actually, so this was really, really early on. Um, the only one, the only presets I had at the time was um, from Optical Wander. And so, yeah, they, they have the, the kind of haze or that matte look to a it. lot of them at the time. <laughs> yeah, I just don't like no, I don't want to sound like I'm feel. making excuses, but at the time I thought it looked good. And then yeah, yeah. as I went back, I was like, yeah, you know, I kind of not, I'm not feeling that matte look. Yeah, I, I don't like matte. We've got matte presets. Steven makes them, but I, I just don't like the matte look. I also don't like the teal look. This is something where I want to see more of a realistic take on, on the, uh, the pizza shop. Yeah. Yeah, so this is actually still Stoop Brewing. They have their, their own um, brick oven pizza mm -hmm. in the bag. So for something like this, we want to see what the hands are doing. Yeah, we get the idea that the pizza oven's there and all that. We get that idea. I'm just going to I think I'll just throw a, a black and white preset on it and call the day for now because um, that color's the color's bothering me. It's driving me crazy. Um, yeah, just a little bit. If you were just slightly higher up on this one to get the hands, it would be good. Yeah. I mean, it's not bad. I, I like the framing and I like the storytelling. This is where that wide helps. You're at 28. You could see that it's a kitchen. You could see that we've got the different tools that are out of focus. So that's good. Coming around to the side is good as well, right? This, I also think, well, it's going to be tougher with an 85 because an 85 is going to be a little too tight for certain things. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and there was no room to back up either. Where I was at, there was actually in a walkway that was right yeah. on the side. I mean, this, this, this there was works. a balcony right behind me. Yeah, but, but this is really good. This is good storytelling type stuff you've got this one's a little wide you could also step back and if you if you have room somewhere to show the widest of the whole area 
um, yeah. would be good. So you've got this shot, which detailing with the dough, you've got her putting stuff onto the dough. The next thing would be maybe getting the pie going into the oven tight with the 85 one, two, or mm. when she, when she's putting down uh, the cheese, you get out that 85 also, and you do just like tight shots of the cheese and, and things along those lines. But you know, the, the details, you can get those later. Um, but yeah, this, this is, these three are good together. They're not all the same. Um, which is good. They tell the story of the pizza being made and then get her holding the pizza at the very end out at you like this. And you focus in on the pizza with her out of focus in a vertical. Yeah. And so, I mean, that's really it. You're just, you're trying to think about the story of that pizza being made. We've got from the beginning to kneading the dough, to spreading it out, to putting the, the stuff on it, to putting it in the oven. Then we've got the tools, right? You've got the pizza board, um, and then it going into the box, all of these different, and then someone enjoying the pizza. So you have all of those different things to keep in your mind. I'm not saying you did anything wrong. It's just you keep this stuff in your mind for the future right. so that you can you can add it to the repertoire. Yeah. Yeah. And that's that's definitely something um, I would say probably in the last two months that I've been trying to work more on is getting um, getting the whole story. So the beginning, the middle and the end. And I've been watching a lot of your a lot of your previous videos where you talked about getting you know the wides, the mediums, the tights, yep, and you know the details. And so, yeah, like as we progress on, hopefully I get more um, more of those you know encompassing shots. Yeah. So tell me what what were you trying here? Um, I, I liked the, the light and this is just a, like a neon sign just hanging in a, in a window. And so you can see, I have one in color and one in black and white. Yeah. Black and, and white doesn't work. Yeah. And, but I, I did like the color and I was like, Oh, okay. You know, and, um, these next, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, these next nine shots are all a series. So I had just gone out really late at night and, um, it was, you know, obviously snowing and I was just, just had gotten the, uh, a seven four and I was like, all right, well, I, I kind of want to see what I can get for, um, you know, night street photography. And, and I found that I really, I, I really like night street photography, mostly because there's so much contrast because between any kind of color, any kind of light. And then the really, really deep, dark blacks of a lot of stuff. Yeah. I mean, for, for me, this is pretty boring of a shot. You know, I, look, it's you, different things you can do with the settings. Obviously, you don't need, need to be at one one thousandth of a second for that. You could uh, work with different apertures to try and get more of it in focus. But let's see if this is a storefront what's connected to it right so if you did step back i don't mind the shot but it doesn't set the world on fire is what i'm getting at mm. but what is it connected to what is there are there other parts of the building that from a distance it would look cool with this sign being the main focus yeah um now i saw a slower shutter speed here so this was good i i really like this with the christmas lights and the tree sorry the the lights going up and 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 this has a very nice old timey look and you froze the action uh, settings wise when you're shooting inanimate objects you have more time generally so if you see that you have one one thousandth of a second at one eight and you're at twelve thousand eight hundred and the subject isn't moving unless you were just going to just straight up freeze the action you can mm -hmm. still do that at five hundred one five hundredth or one two fiftieth of a second. So from twelve thousand eight hundred, you go to sixty four hundred is one stop. From sixty four hundred to thirty two hundred is another stop. So we can go down two stops of light with our shutter speed. We can go from one one thousandth to one five hundredth to one two fiftieth and get the same exact exposure. the 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 goal is to try and keep that ISO down a little bit. Mm -hmm. But. Yeah, I mean, it, with having the snow, you can also tell that there's quite a bit of grain in there as well. Which is okay. I have no problem with noise. I have no problem with grain. I really don't. Um, and, and if it's the difference between having uh, a faster shutter speed at a higher ISO so that you can freeze action and that leads to some noise or grain versus uh, a slower shutter speed 
at a lower ISO and blurry image, I'll take the noise all day long because I, I want that image that I that I I captured the image versus missing it. Um, yeah, so just I don't worry about it too much. Well, you want to within reason, right? Find a happy happy place. Now, this is really cool that you went the other direction and went to one twentieth of a second because now you're conveying motion. You've got snow coming down. It's windy, so the stuff's blowing around. You've mm -hmm. got the lamp post here, um, which. I guess is similar. I don't know if it's out there at the same place, but let's see the street scene as well. Just other things to throw in there. I like the tight stuff. Let's see some of that wide, which is kind of what you gave here. The editing is great. I love the black and white. It's super thick. Looks really good. You're doing a great job with your settings. Uh, you're doing a very good job with the compositions too. So right off the bat, still really good. Now, if this is shooting through a window, Yes. Let me look at the next couple. I'm <laughs> a very dirty fan. window at that. Well, that's okay. I'm a big fan of shooting through windows and storefronts, but if it's so tight that we can't really tell that it's shooting through a window and it's a storefront, you kind of miss out on it. Like you got even, you got a little closer with this, but back up, go across the street. If you have room, let's see the lights, right? Let's see the darker areas up above in the lit area around the storefront so that you can see so that you can see more of the scene. I love window storefront shots, especially with reflections that can be behind you during the day or when you shoot through and you see people doing things inside because it's kind of like a look inside of a fishbowl. So for something like the, the coffee shop, they probably have a sign that's on. Let's let's see the empty coffee shop at night shooting wider. I think I do have one of the like the whole coffee shop from across the street. Yeah, because it's it's just one of those little tiny like coffee stand hut things. Uh huh. And um, but I think I I kind of gave it the boot in putting putting it in here just because I didn't like I didn't like how it looked. It looked very snapshotty, like 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 you say, because I don't think I. I don't think I got a different perspective. So I don't think I got down low. I think I literally just straight on yeah. shot it. And it just, it was like, oh yeah, there's a coffee stand. Well, it depends. It depends. Sometimes I really like the straight on symmetry. And there's a lot we can do with processing to be like, oh, if we make it black and white, that might change the whole feel of it. But don't forget, it's like, if you're, if it's an empty build, you know, it's empty, it's night, it's late, and nobody's out on the, on the road, that, that stillness and emptiness is part of the story. Yeah. Um, another thing I can recommend just to throw into your brain for the future is if you do this during the day and there's people walking around, definitely go with the slower shutter speeds when you can to convey the motion of people walking by while you freeze the 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 coffee stand or the flower store or whatever it is, because that way it's not a snapshot where it just freezes action it, it actually conveys motion. So that's going to be, that's something that just to always keep in the back of your mind, because you already did it with the lamp post, which is good. Now we can throw it in with the people and it's going to help tell the story um, of it's going to convey the motion. So I like this. I don't not like it. I would just, I'd like to see further away as well. Okay. And I'm going with contrast. Cause I hate, I personally hate flatness. See how flat it is. And then you go like that. You're like, yeah. oh, okay. Wow. They opened the 2018 little did they know a year and a half later, they would be in trouble. Right. So this is fine, but again, through the window. Is it through the window? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, because we can see the right there. Um, I don't mind shooting through windows, but I want to see the window frame. Right. Right. I want to see that draw you into the shot. Because if it's super tight, we don't really know what's going on. I barely could tell at a glance that you were shooting through the window. Yeah. But the positives, your settings are good. Right. You're seeing the exposure in front of you and you're getting it right. That's a major good thing. Yeah. And I have noticed um, as or I remember from when I was early, early on, uh, just got my a seven four was shooting with the a seven three. There was so much going through my head and I, I have ADD as well. So I typically will run around and that's kind of why I have to keep in my head like no, no, no. There's stuff that you have to get. There's stuff that you have to do. And I remember at the end of those, those last couple of photos, actually stopping myself and saying, okay, you need to look at your exposure bar. You need to make sure that 
you know, you're actually putting the settings where they need to be and go from there. So, yeah, it's, it's always been one of those things where it's like, okay, well, I need to pay attention to my settings. Yeah, but you're doing well, really. Seriously, you're doing really well right now. Thank you. This, I, I abstract, it's fine. I don't know what it is. Um, yeah, that's, that's what I got for that one. That's a little better. I like the saw. See, I like this processing a lot better than this one too. Yeah. I like, I like the feel of it. It just, it just has a nice feel. I like that you're going out there and you're trying to find, find the images around you. I actually had that, that one, uh, so number 23 is actually probably one of my favorite photos that I've taken. I actually had it uh, printed on screen and okay. uh, I'll be putting that one up on the wall. Nice. Yeah. It looks really good. Self-portrait. Yep. It's fine. Oh, I didn't mean yeah. to skip it. That's it's Play, fine. Playing around. Yeah. I mean, it's always good to try and do these types of things. You could also, did you use the app to control it? I did. Yeah. So my left hand that's down yep. is actually uh, controlling the phone. Got it. Yeah. I mean, good, good job. Just, you know, what, what makes it a little better is the out of focus railing here. Mm -hmm. Makes it, makes it better already. So this is nice that you picked a nice focus on the rivets. Um, settings wise, we're good. And just don't get always stuck at one eight all the time. Uh, I don't mind it. Just play around at a few different stops, depending on how much you want to get in focus. Yeah. And, and I've noticed like, I, I do need to try different, you know, F stops because I will usually set it to the widest open stop that I can and just leave it there. And I know that I can get different dynamic photos and, and different you know, looks depending on what F stop I'm at. Yeah. This is perfect composition. I really love the feel of this one. See, I don't have a problem with you at one eight here because I love these wider shots at one eight because the backgrounds are less distracting really good composition set up here i like it i like it all i like it through and through so this is a really good self-portrait thank you yeah i thought it was the best photo that i've ever had of myself and it just happened to be that i took it of myself good oh, <laughs> it works i i really like it it's nice low angle really well done and so this is better now through the wind uh, is that a window yes it is a window right Yep. Because now we're seeing what's going on inside a little bit. And yeah. that's good when you can see the reflection. Just see the difference with the color here, the brightness. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think I, I have two uh, versions of this saved and I think I have a brighter one. And then I have, you know, this one that was a little bit darker. I, I think the only reason that I didn't brighten it or it didn't go with the brighter one is just, I felt like it was too much sheen off of his forehead. So it almost looked like it was blown out a little bit, but don't worry about it. Don't yeah. worry about a little bit of blown out. That's okay. Cause the main subject's fine. I just think it, 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 it just looks more polished this way. Yeah. That's the 85. It's all right. I mean, it, it's all right. We don't get much of the water and the reflections. Maybe try a vertical with this too. Yeah. I like the trees or I know you're, you have the 85, so it's harder to go in tighter, but that, that area between, oops, I want to hit lock. The truss and the, uh, and the trees is kind of a cool play, you know, with the trees, something, I don't know. Okay. Just so yeah, I, mean, I can see what you're kind of going with, with the, all the different angles, and then you have natural. Yeah. Long exposure? Yep, long exposure. Yeah. Yeah, that last one was an extremely long exposure, 30 seconds, because it was, oh, it was hard it, I mean, it was flat black out there. Well, this is where you want to try and get some of the water in there, because so you get the reflections of the clouds moving and, and everything. So that's you want some of those foreground elements in that one. Okay. 
Yeah. So this is at one eight. This is one of those you could you could try at F four or five six if you want to still get some of the stars and everything to show up. You may have to bump the ISO up a little bit, but that's okay. This is a I like your composition here. I'm gonna go full black and white and not sepia tone here. Okay. Nope, don't want to go down too too much with that. No, this is really good. It's very nice. Because you, you left enough of the skyline in there, which helps. Nailed it. See, now you're at three five, but that that that's spot on. So the story behind this photo, that's actually my grandfather. And it's the first time that he's used a digital camera. That was my A7 III. Yeah. And he didn't give me enough time. So he, he had the camera and he was taking uh, photos. And I was literally just pulling my A7 IV out, had put the lens on it. And I had no time to adjust settings. So however my settings were, is how I took the photo because I literally just had to pull up my camera, take the shot. Um, just because he, as soon as he took a photo, he just had this great big, you know, smile on his face and he was, you know, he was so amazed at, you know, the advancements of, of yeah. photography and, and equipment. I mean, he, he's been a photographer since, Oh, I want to say like the thirties, forties. So he's got a lot of really old Kodak cameras and, and all old equipment. And this is really, it's a great shot. This is really good. Yeah. And I had to, I know I had to do a lot of processing to this because it, it was so blown out that it, it almost looked like it was sheer white. Well, it's the power of the raw file. See, I don't, I don't know that. And the good thing is, you don't let out crappy work, right? You put out the best of the best. People don't know. And I don't need to know, like generally the everyday people won't know that you had to tweak this file quite a bit to get it to where it is. That's, that's all right. That's why I get super tired of the whole, you know, is the camera good or let's, let's raise the aperture or the ISO of uh, the exposure five stops and see how it. nobody cares. If you get the picture, you get the picture. That's yeah. all that matters. This is really good with the dog because, you know, a lot of times, except for it's not in focus, this one's not on the eyes, it's on the nose. Um, a lot of people, you know, I'm, I like low angles too, but sometimes when you face, you know, go straight down, even if a kid, like I like photos of kids at lower angles, but if you're up close and the kid's looking up at you like this and you isolate, it can look really cool. Yeah. This is awesome low angle. Really good at one eight. I like it with the natural vignette. It's really good. Thank you. Yeah, these these isolation shots are great because you have you have some information in the background and everything, which which makes it look good. Car, car. That's weird. Yeah. Is so that that's that's why I, I threw these three in here, just because I, I loved. I loved what I did with the, the set, the three photos. So you have the two faced car and then you have both sides of both cars or of the same car. Yeah. That's that one you can say is meh. Uh, I mean, look, when you go out and you're just looking for images, sometimes some of them are going to be like that. But when you shoot a bunch of different cars, it's kind of cool to get the grills and to get the lights and, and to see all the the, the differences between the new cars and the old cars, especially if you go to like a car show. Yeah. So I pulled out the, 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 you see how green, I don't know if you can tell if it's green, it's super green. Oh, okay. And so what I did see, it was this green. I just started to add slide the magenta slider over and it chews up, gets rid of that green and makes it look more natural. Okay. Yeah. I, I didn't even realize that that was green. Yep. I mean, that's interesting with the two faced car 4,000. Yeah. Th this, I, I mean, you're at one eight, so be it right. It's fine. Cause you need to let in more light and it also isolates these people, but because of the noise and the grain, the way we can do that, we can cut through it with contrast 
and D Hayes here. Okay. And obviously you don't want to go up with the clarity because that's just going to raise all of the other issues. But look, it's okay for it to be dark because we're out on the street. But look, yeah. look where it started and look how we finished it. Now it's, it's looking much better. Yeah, I think, I think for this one, I, I was kind of going of for yellow. that old school kind of look. That, that's why I kind of had that mat on there. Just yeah. because old school car, modern times. Oh, I get it. I just don't like matte finish. I think matte finish is pretty boring. Yeah. I don't know. It's just so flat. I mean, if we go back to this, let's we could throw a different preset on here that's probably you know has an old timey look. Let's see. Waffle House or Wonder Years. I just don't like the colors of it. I think I might have actually started with waffle house mm -hmm. could be i like the focus of the back here and then you can see people waiting out of focus in the background so they're not a distraction i think that works okay that's good at the starting line or not starting just parked this is good use of the reflections See, I like all the different reflections that's going on in here through the glass. It's an interesting angle. Yeah. So uh, this is just after I got the 150 to 600 mil lens. This uh -huh. is street photography with a 150 to 600. Yeah. It's Don't ask me why I just was trying things. <laughs> But this is actually a giant billboard that's um, at Pike Place Market in downtown Seattle. Yeah. And it, yeah, the angle is actually from from the street through the shops that are closed because, I mean, it's I think at this time it was like close to midnight. So through the shops and then getting that strange kind of wonky angle to the sign. Yeah. We got a lot more to get through here. Let me uh, let me start rapid firing on some of these. I like this. I like this a little darker because I like the focus of where the light is, like the eye, and then the the strip of light. So I just went with a little bit more contrast. Twelve thousand eight hundred. Yeah. That so the problem with these lenses is the the variable aperture. That's gonna kill you it's not going to yeah. kill you but i mean that's it's going to limit your ability to like certain pictures because this isn't a lens that i would use for sports like this i, I mean it depends on the sport but you're now used to one eights and two eights and when you go to a five six a five to six three it's going to start to become more snapshotty yeah yeah and this is also uh this one and the last one and the the one of the dias de la morta lady um they're all handheld yeah yep good with the bird flying no i could just tweak it let's see what else we got interesting angle with this I like the way the light's hitting the mountain. Probably go a little darker. Get rid of some of that, whatever that color was. Yeah, and it, it's fine. I, I like your depth on that as well. This one's not sharp. No, and I wouldn't really be surprised that it was because this is way out there. Yeah, it's a, the, all the ripples of air. This is very Bob Rossi. Very happy paintings. Looks good. <laughs> yeah, nice low angle using the, the light coming in. That works. I like the feel of that. Uh, mm, we got to go high contrast with this if we're going to do this. I'm going to bring it down a little bit. I think you'll see the difference. Just a 
I don't, it's okay. not the, it, it's not the best, but I think when we tighten it up like this, it makes it even better. Okay. All right. The 12,800. So this is the case where we don't want to be at 12,000. I don't know if you're an auto ISO or, or controlling it yourself. Uh, th I'm pretty sure I'm probably an auto ISO. Yeah. Rid of auto ISO forever. Yeah. I I've, I've been trying lately to get out of auto ISO. Just you don't need it for you your suggestions and videos. Yeah. You don't need it. Look, you, you have the EVF right in front of your face. You have the exposure. You'll see everything right there, whether your exposure is right or wrong. But see, 12,800 is so wrong in this situation from the camera. I don't know yeah. why it's throwing it off so much, but you're at one four thousandth of a second. And yeah. so basically it's like, it thinks you need more light. Well, if we're at one one thousandth of a second, so let's play the game. 12,800 goes to 6,400, goes to 3,200, goes to 1,600 ISO. Three stops. One four thousand, let's go three stops. We got one two thousand. We got one one thousand and one five hundred. So one five hundredth at six three. You know, at at the the sixteen hundred. So even if you went to twenty five hundred ISO to give yourself a little bit more leeway, you'd be fine. Yeah. Now it's fine, but it's also there's some mo. You put noise reduction on this, didn't you? I think so. And then probably you see, you see how now it looks out of focus with that. Yeah, it kind of has a weird haze. It just, yeah, it looks like motion movement, but I'm like, but it's at one four thousand. So, yeah, it's a really good composition. It's a really good shot. I just don't like those settings because of what the camera's doing. You should be able to set your settings. The camera, like, it's going to be thrown off so much, the auto ISO by by certain bright things. Yeah, and I, in all honesty, I can't tell you why I was at one four thousand. I think I might have screwed up, and I thought I was at one four hundred. Yeah, it happens. I like this because you have the two pieces of wood on the side drawing you in. Really good job seeing that. That that looks like cookies and uh, that looks like one of our presets, but it is. Uh, I'm just I gonna, don't remember which one. I'm just gonna throw some. I'm I'm gonna get rid of ours and just put some more contrast on it. Uh, we get it. Like it's loading onto the ferry to go across the sound and. Uh, it's, it's good. It's wide enough and you've got the cars. I actually would like to see a little bit more of the front of your car. Oh, okay. Might be interesting. Cause then you have the car view that it, it, it just makes it feel more like the car view. That's fine. Let's see the top of the cannon. Yeah. There you go. That's a great angle. Plenty of presets would work on something like this. That doesn't do very much. Great detail. See, that's cool. I like your positioning of the cable crossing. It's funny enough, I was on the ferry and I shot that across the water. Oh, wow. Yeah, that works. What do we have? We're at 28 now, 2470. Is that the ferry going back? Um, so this is actually a completely different day. Huh. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's, it's good. Your focus there works. All right. See, do you see why I just like wider on this stuff? Yeah. You know, because now there's so much information here. Keep whatever upside down. Okay, good job. Um, first of the season, fresh halibut is here. You know, you got people waiting in line. That stuff's awesome. Look up Gordon Parks. He's one of my favorite all-time photographers. Um, look at his street photos from the 40s, 50s, and 60s. Just amazing stuff. You might, so one of the things you'll see is that if you, this is good. I like this. There's a couple of different things we could do. We could go and get as straight on as possible and go a little wider to get the whole building in if you can. Um, it just, you may have to back up across the street to do it. But yeah, that just that would be good as well. This is fine. I like it. I like that. I like the angle. Skateboarder. This is where you may want to speed up the shutter speed a little bit. Okay. 
is using the grate. That's insane. Yeah. It's not, it's not, it's not insane. It's just stupid, <laughs> but yeah, faster shutter speed here. Okay. For this one. So you could bump the ISO cause you're getting some, it's, it's fine to get some motion, but if you get, he's like blurry because of that. Yeah. But that's okay. Skittles, 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 Skittles. While you're going through. So this was my first attempt at manual focus. Oh, I don't even know why we would manual focus anymore. But if you just want to try it. I, I think it was just kind of like, ah, I'm going to try it. Yeah. I mean, this is super sharp. This is beautiful. I like that. I'm going to go a little darker, bring it down a little. I'm not going to lie. I'm so glad that you like my stump. I love that stump. I do. It will. It's the depth that you captured, right? It's the depth that it's not just uh, this, you yeah. know, mm -hmm. there's a big difference between that and this. We got nice separation there. Even this is better too. This is the one where you want to try that longer shutter speed to get the water flowing. Yeah. Same thing with that. Same thing with that. See, I, I like the wideness that you captured here. The wideness because it's, it gives you the vastness of the trees. Mm -hmm. The 8,000 ISO is unnecessary though. Yeah. That's the auto ISO is killing you. It's not killing you. You're doing perfectly fine. It's not killing you. But <laughs> if you can get out of it, you'd, you'd, be, you'd be fine. So that's good too. I, I like the black and white because it's, you know, I'm sure the color wasn't very good in that situation. No, and, and that was why I went with the black and white because there's more, I, I guess there's more vividness to just the black and white than there was with the yep. color because the color was just all, it, I mean, it was almost all one color. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, th this isn't a great all over image, but the composition, the seeing the out of focus objects, the things you're doing here are very good. So everything that you're doing is really good for, for, I wouldn't know that you've only been shooting for eight or nine months. You've picked it up really well, really quick. Um, Thank you. I, I, that, that does mean a lot. Yeah. I'm, this stuff is good, right? You're only going to, you're going to continue to progress. You're seeing the world really well from inanimate objects to those people portraits out on the streets to this reflection. Really good. No, I mean, all this, this is great. Great angles. This is, I, I like the processing of this one because, you know, it's more contrasty. Um, yeah. That worked out really well. This, we could, we could still go to town, a bunch of different things on this. Yeah, I think, I think I almost went through every single preset that I had and I liked yeah. almost, almost all of them on yeah. this. this That's image. one that, that would work. That's awesome. Really good. Nice, nice focus. The 12,800 though, is it's, that's the camera. Like yeah. this is, you get away at one, one thousandth of a second coming down two stops. You'd be fine. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you. This is just a tree. <laughs> it not is a much, tree, but it's a crazy looking tree. It is, but there's not much we can do with that one. Yeah. Yeah, it's a little better. Hmm. I don't like this one as much because you can't get the, the straight line. Like if you were try to line these lines up straighter, probably would give it a better feel because it just feels like the building's falling over. Okay. This is a good, a good street shot because I like the motion the, where you're working. Good. Shooting through this thing. That's a very good photojournalistic shot to help tell the story. I mean, that's good as well. I, so I like good. Oh, I was going to say, so this was actually an accidental photo that turned out absolutely amazing. Um, I was waiting at the crosswalk and I just happened to accidentally hit the trigger yeah. and burst fire. And I, when I felt the camera click, I looked at it and I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah. I like that photo. Yeah. So I, I can kind of take credit for it, but also it was an accident. That's all right. <laughs> I mean, so I, some of the challenges I'll give you are to go out and you know, set your camera to 35 millimeters, right? Set this lens to 35 and just do that for 20 pictures. So okay. uh, go sit in a location, one spot that you can't move, right? You can't walk away. You can rotate, you can, you can do that, but you have to sit in the same spot and you can rotate through all of your lenses. But I want you to sit there for 30 minutes in one spot 
and take pictures. And what's going to happen is like, I think for the first 10 minutes, you're going to have trouble seeing the photos around you. And then all of a sudden you're going to be like, there it is, right? There's some leading lines and there's some repetitive things. And here's what I'm, oh, I looked up, right? So pick different places, obviously interesting places to, to try and get shots, like a park bench somewhere or just on a, sit on a, sit on the sidewalk somewhere, right? You okay. never know what you're going to find. But we got to move through. Those are, those are fine. That's all right. This, if you're going to do this, this is where you, you got to go, uh, you got to go ham on this. See the difference? See how flat that is? Yeah. And then we pump it up. That's one you could totally pump up. Oh, and I like your reflection. Okay. Yeah. I didn't even see my reflection when I first uploaded the image. And then I, when I was tweaking it, I actually, you know, pulled some of the clarity and all of that. And I was like, oh, hey. <laughs> yeah. No, oh, you're, you're doing a really good job. Really. Awesome. Um, where do you want to go with it? Uh, so I, I, I've already started a business, um, a photography business. And that was one of the reasons that I really wanted to um, get this one-on-one -on -one with you is because uh, I'd like, I'd like to make it my full-time gig. And uh, right now I'm, I'm just a crane operator. Um, so this is, is kind of a expensive hobby and um, yeah, I'd, I'd, like I said, I'd like to really turn it into so my full-time gig. All right. What I would do. So I'm all, I'm all for going after it. Right. I'm, but I would never quit my job until you've, I have gotten so busy with your photography that it's taking away from, you know, that your job is taking away from your ability to make more money. What I would do is if you have access to these sites, find the developers, the architects, the foremen, the, the people that run the sites and be like on my off day, I want to come back or whatever it is when you're not working. And I want to do a photo story of this, of, of what's going on. Then you show the architects, at work, pointing at shit with their hard hats on or going over the plans, telling the photo story of this because those documentary images are going to be important for the people that are building the properties and they might end up wanting to hire you to do that type of thing on future properties. So okay. try to tie it into things that you're already doing that you already have an in with and then you can start to build from there because I think you have the ability to do that, whether it's inanimate objects, you know, going there late at night and, and capturing the images or during the day or with people. You okay. Know, I, I think you're covering all the angles really well already. So those are the, that's the, what I would start to do is talk to the, the people running the sites and see about the business. Hey, do you want some photos for your site? And I don't care if you do it for nothing to start. I really don't. I know people are like, Oh, if you don't get paid, my, my value is blah, blah, blah. I'm like, yeah, I get it. But sometimes it's like, if you don't get the access, you know, you're not going to get the access and to get those shots that then you can showcase in the future and be like, yeah, this is what I get paid to do this. Okay. Yeah. Starting out, I just kind of have been selling just prints of my photography. Um, but I would like to go uh, not away from it. I, I wouldn't mind continuing to, you know, sell prints, but yeah. I would like to go more towards working with businesses and, 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 uh, I live in, I wouldn't call it a small town, but it's like a medium small town. So I like working with, um, you know, small businesses. So uh, walk up to every one of them, do the photo, photo stories, go to the back to the brewery, follow them or do that and then get into okay. their Instagrams. And then they start paying you in food to start. And then they, then you're like, all right, now it's time to get paid. I'll yeah. Okay. I think you got it. I think you're in a great spot. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. So I'll get this saved up and sent over when it's done. Um, but no, I, I think you're in a really good spot so far. Awesome. Um, one of the other questions I, I did have is yep. uh, like, uh, when would be a good time to set up uh, like another one of these months out, another year out? I mean, that's up, that's up to you. Um, I mean, I'd give it at least six months. Okay. I mean, if there's something that major come up, you could always email me and send me some questions. Um, but yeah, I would, I would wait, a, wait a while till you start building up different stories and, and think that you need it. Okay. Okay. And uh, so any thoughts on the gear that I have? So I have the, the 17 to 28, the 28 to 70 Sigma, um, 
the 85 and then I have the 150 to 600. Uh, I mean, a lot depends on what you're doing. I think a 70 to 200 or even the 70 to 180 Tamron might be a good option. Okay. Um, if you can find a Tamron, they have the 28 to 150 F2 or it's 35 to 150. I mean, I have that, but I don't use it. Um, I think you have a good starting point. I think you can start to add some of those specialty lenses, maybe a macro lens at some point. Um, you have the 85, maybe a 35, one eight. I love looking at though, you know, that type of lens. I love 35, especially on the construction sites are going to be really cool for isolating the subject mm -hmm. um, and still separating them from the background a little bit, even full body. Okay. Okay. So yeah. look, look for, you know, 35 and then look for probably a macro. If that's the work you want to do, if you want to do some macro stuff, like that's a specialty thing. Right. I wouldn't add it unless you actually want to do that. But I think some of those other primes for the type of work that you're doing, you have an 85. Beautiful. The uh, 35. I, I don't think you really need a 50 if you got an 85. But I think a 35 is a really good type of image uh, lens. So what I would do, like I said, is set your 17 to whatever the lens set, whatever lens you have to 35 and leave it at that and walk around and see what you can get with it. OK. Yeah, I've been I've been using the the uh... 24 to 70 uh, Sigma art lens a lot. Yeah, it's good. Um, I, I don't know why, but I really love that lens over all of my other ones. It's a good one. So, yeah, I um, I don't really have many, many questions. I, I You pretty much covered everything. All right. Sounds good to me. Uh, like I said, I'll, I'll get it saved up, but you're doing a really good job. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, that... That right there probably means the most to me, <laughs> uh, just because I I don't have a whole heck of a lot of confidence just because it has been such a short time in in shooting. Yeah. That uh yeah I I didn't know where I really fell in the you know quote unquote professional photographer world. You're in a good spot. You're really in a good spot so far. So that's good. Awesome. Thank you very much. All right, man. You have a good, uh, good day. Thank you. You as well. All right. Thanks. So there you go. What'd you think? Uh, before I get into the recap of this video, I just wanted to say a massive thank you to Jared for putting on this one-on-one -on -one mentorship, not just for me, but for other vast amount of photographers as well. The main thing that I really am appreciative for is just how much Jared is reassuring and sincere in what he's saying and when he's talking to you. He comes across more as a teacher than a critic, which I really do appreciate. In only doing this for nine months, like I've said many times before, I didn't really know how I felt about where I was at. I didn't know if what I was doing was 100% correct. The main reason for that is because all I really had were friends and family that critiqued my, my work, so to say, my art. Typically with friends and family, you kind of get, oh man, these are fire, these are awesome, they're the best photos in the world. And even though I do take pride in the work that I've put out, the photos that I've put out, I knew that there were other things. And that was what I appreciated as well about the one-on-one -on -one mentorship is the advice for better settings, completely getting out of um, any kind of auto, um, where Jared mentioned being an auto ISO. I, even though I had already dipped my toe into the world of uh, being in a manual setting. I was controlling my shutter speed and I was controlling my aperture size. I still kind of let that crutch slip in there, so to speak, when it came to the uh, auto ISO. Another really big thing that I, I absolutely loved was how Jared had mentioned that task or the challenge of sitting in a place for 30 minutes and you can swap out your lenses, but you can't move. You can't get up and 
go explore anywhere else. You can swivel, you can turn, you can do all that. But sitting in a place for 30 minutes and trying to see if your eye can capture something that it wouldn't normally capture because you're always moving around everywhere. For me, that's huge because I typically am always on the move. I'm always here, there, here, there, everywhere. To have that challenge, and I, and I have yet to do that challenge, but I will be putting it to use here really, really soon. To have that challenge is huge. And I mean huge. Now, during the mentorship, Jared had asked me where I wanna go with my photography. And I didn't really have a good answer, but in thinking about it, I came up with a better answer. I want to travel. I want to take my gift of photography and my skill of photography and see as many places I possibly can before the end of time. And I want to be able to share that with you and with as many people as I can. But to be able to travel the world, do photography, and share it with as many people as possible, I couldn't think of a better life to live. That's going to do it for tonight's video. Thanks, everyone. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit the notification bell. Do all of the things. I have an event coming up this weekend called the Dream Builders Car Show. So... I'll be making a video for that. Stay tuned, and I'll see you. Later.